hello guys we are gathered today uh, for the webinar on understanding branding by rahul rahul the one um, rahul understand this is a very important topic for frigen and uh, we would really want everyone participation today on with questions with queries with uh, you know any any views you must have you know the, everything is welcome um, you know uh, so go ahead please ask questions as you like but once the webinar is over so keep down noting questions all the queries that you find in your mind and rahul will gladly answer that so i just uh, hand over this to rahul and rahul will start the webinar on understanding branding thank you gaurav and guys i see a few more guys joining in thank you very much so seven eight people at least you know there is a uh, some excitement in, <laughs> in delivering this webinar which i honestly consider really important for all of us at region to understand so while we are at dharamshala i'm actually going to impose myself on everyone and i am not going to let anyone off the hook and i will deliver this again i'm just going to share my desktop give me a moment please so i trust my screen is uh, visible to everyone um so i'm talking about branding and sharing some insights and some questions with you please do keep a paper and pen handy or you know if you're obviously on your computers just keep you know i'll ask you to actually do a little exercise as well so this should be a pretty interesting session for all of you also quite thoughtful um and i'll talk about where i learned all this from so uh, the first thing is that from a financial evaluator's perspective when financial evaluators are looking at a company the first thing they try to find out uh, after the balance sheet is does this company have a brand does it have a you know either several if it if it's an fmcg company does it have several uh, products which which have some decent branding or does a, a it services company like infosys and so on and so forth the brand is very important the value of that brand and here is why the brand is a moat around the company uh, you know just like in um, uh, in palaces and you know forts they used to and moats in palaces actually uh, out in the country used to have moats around palaces uh, a brand is a protection like that against the volatility what volatility of the market it brings predictability to the sales pipeline brands drive pricing power um as as an example because of you know ups and downs in the market one of the thing that brands do is that they enable companies to sell at a certain price without sometimes increasing their costs if the market demands so and other times even increasing their costs to ensure that their margins retain companies without brands if they do not increase their uh, selling price their margins dip and as a result the health of the company can dip companies with brands and enough financial value uh, uh, within them good health can actually do both because of the brand they can drive up prices when the market demands so if the costs of production for example are up or the cost of people in a uh, in a in a you know in a very healthy job market in a services company for example so when the costs are up brands can drive their prices up as opposed to companies without brands without a brand power they would have to still remain within those same costs that you know they were operating in pre increase and this hits their financial health in the long term so 
a brand is actually the most important and difficult thing to crack in in a good company um it is much more than a in a science it's actually touchy feely it's an art it it's a whole lot of storytelling and the storytelling is both internal inward looking and outward looking and managing that is is has many complex aspects to this to to itself it has uh, there is character uh, apart from storytelling around the brand so we'll explore some of this as i go along in this talk so let's look at what characterizes a brand you know let's look at toyota maruti a lot of, almost everyone here or we're all from here from india when i deliver this to an international audience we'll probably talk about you know give more examples uh, from in international brands but look, let's look at the toyota because we've been exposed to it on the so think about this what do you think if toyota were a person what would this person look like is it young the is 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 it a she is this a mother is this somebody coming caring uh, what kind of clothes is this person wearing uh, what is her values you know what what are the words what are the ad adjectives that you would describe toyota with or look at tata or reliance or maruti don't words come to your mind some adjectives that you would uh, you know describe these companies with so actually let's take a step back everyone uh, you know go ahead and take a paper or a pen take 2 minutes off and write down let's come let's write down two uh, brands what words come to your mind what adjectives yeah like thing young caring mother um reliable whatever whatever you know what are the values if they were people so let's do maruti and let's do toyota and you may also want to do tata and reliance let's do all four of them how about that take 2 3 minutes and write down some characteristics and punch those characteristics in the chat screen please i'm going to switch to that window so i can see what you're punching in so some more people have joined in um if you see my screen uh we are talking about you know what characterizes a brand so i am inviting you all to think that toyota maruti tata and reliance if they were people if they were human beings what would they what are the adjectives that come to your mind what kind of a person are they is it a woman is it a man is it is, is she young is is hip is it funny is it you know what sort of values do these people have what do they wear how do they look do they look smart do they look hippy you know all, all these just just write down some adjectives say write down five for each of these four brands toyota maruti tata and reliance think hard okay really think hard describe in many more words think what your father thinks or about some of these uh, brands and you know uh, parents may have put in money in reliance or tata or you know in, in their shares go on yeah don't think too much keep come up with more adjectives you know go on everyone and invite everyone to do this please shashank ritesh radhika ravi everyone please join in ishan join in please just write down some of these this is very important so really important insight that you're going to get
So we have Girish joining us as well. Girish is going to join us as an Android developer in mid of um, June next year. Girish, go on. If Toyota, Maruti, Tata, and Reliance were people, were human beings, how would you describe them? What are they wearing? What do you think about them? Are they, are they, is that luxury? Is that luxurious? Is that affordable? Is there trust? Is there mistrust? Is there dependability? What, what do you think? What attribute? What values do they carry? Um, guys, would in, would invite you to stay away from Apple and yeah, look at Reliance, um, look at Maruti, Toyota, and Tata. Please stay with that. Even IKEA, stay away from it if you can. Because you know, I, even I am not exposed to at least IKEA so well. But So Gaurav, uh, on Tata, what more about huge corporate and salt? Say more please on that. Shashank, when you say Maruti grandfatherly, uh, say a little more please about that. Uh, what is grand? You know, just describe grand. What for you as well? Does that mean luxury or, uh, I mean, give me another word for that grand. So you both have used, Shashank and Gaurav, you both have used grand. I mean, so what does grand mean? Is this luxury? Uh, Maruti clearly is not luxury. Rahul, when I say grand, actually it's grandfatherly, I mean uh, aged in the sense uh, I consider it to be aged, old, uh, reliable, wise. Rahul, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah. so say more, uh, Shushan, and use some more, maybe a few more words. Okay. Okay, is everyone done? Shall I move on to my next screen? All right, I'll move on. So, how many of you um, relate to this? And just punch in if you relate to relate to you. You've said things like that here. I see Ritesh having said about Maruti. Um, 
service parts available, reliability. So I have reliable over here. Even if it breaks down, there will be a service center nearby, which is exactly what Ritesh is saying. Easily available spares. Yeah, who else is saying? Uh, Maruti, once again, we have reliable and accessible coming from Gaurav. Shashank is saying old but reliable. Wise. That's an important one. Wise. So Shashank, you said grandfatherly, which is old. I use the word middle-aged. I think somebody used wise for Maruti, is it? Uh, please go ahead, speak out if uh, you know you did. I'm yeah, trying uh, to so get out. wise, wise in the in a similar manner. Uh, wise because mid, uh, middle aged might not be really wise for me, but I would really consider someone. I mean, uh, someone who was more experienced, relatively more experienced, would probably be wise enough and would know would have a handle on the pulse uh, of people probably you would right. know what exactly would be bare enough for them and to to really be luxurious but bare enough right got it so do you relate to these dependable affordable is it safe is it reliable i clearly hear you know i found in my sessions functional you know a lot coming out and middle age yeah middle age you know shashank i agree with you uh, my use of word middle-aged or this adjective was more around mature and balanced, you know, that kind of a thing. So it probably sort of connects somewhere with wise that you have used. So go ahead and say, you know, yes, and you know, if you have any insights or I can move on to. Ishan has used miser and scrooge, miser scrooge. So is that also how you would define Maruti? Sushan, you have some observations? Okay. But would you relate to, you know, a general sense that it, people are saying it's reliable, okay, not safe. We have disagreement there. Um, there is a sense of dependability. There is a sense of wisdom and, you know, old or middle-aged maturity, things like that. Okay, got it. Maybe compromise on safety. But you know, maybe questionable. But let's look at let's look at that. Uh, let's move on to the next screen. How about Toyota? So go ahead. I mean, um, are there are there connects here with Toyota? Speak out, please. Uh, I don't see much in the chat session. It's quality, right? That's actually what they're known for. Their, their logo is like that. So Ishan completely agrees with quality, dependable, functional, not flamboyant. It is extremely safe, affordable. But it's affordable luxury for a lot of us as Indians. Now, okay, let's leave out space, um, you know, safe. But do you see that there is a general connect between Toyota and Maruti? There is a you know, maybe quality, maybe safe, but dependable, they both are functional, there is no flamboyance. There is a certain kind of commonality between Toyota and Maruti. Do you guys see it? So, Shashank does, Ishan does, Nitish does. So, there is a general word of others. Do you, do you tend to see that there is a general, you know, how you perceive Toyota? It's not luxury. You don't look at a Toyota Corolla as it's affordable luxury, but there is also this space. It's not, it's not flamboyant. It may be classic. It may be really good quality, dependability. You don't have to go for maintenance so often and stuff like that. So I do get, a, you know, quite a few yeses. So, there is a very interesting insight here. Do you know when Toyota came to India? Um, so, this is the brand, general brand image that Toyota has around the world. And there are two insights here. When Toyota came to India, it figured out that this brand space that Toyota has come to, know, to be known for around the world has already been largely captured by Maruti. So they couldn't position a small car or come in with a family car in the same space because people related to 
functionality, dependability, not being flamboyant, affordability, all with Maruti. And back then, honestly, you know, having moved from Ambassador and Fiat to Maruti 800 and seen a decade of Maruti, two decades of, I think, people in, in the middle class, lower middle class, upper middle, the whole middle class range saw it as a quality also. Moving from where we came, you know, a lot of you on this session are eight, nine, ten years younger to me. So I've seen ten more years of Maruti. And I know what a jump. I've driven. I, I, I first learned how to drive on an old ambassador. So I know what a shift in quality it was for someone like me. And it stayed like that for another 10 years for my dad and, you know, a whole lot of people in the family. To date, it, it sort of symbolizes that. So it's also generational, you know, in some ways. So Toyota couldn't position its cars to compete with Maruti. It would have taken Maruti head on. So, um, sorry, I, I, is my sound clear to everyone or someone's complaining? Um, can everyone hear me clearly? Okay, thanks. Um, so, that's one. So, like I said, Toyota was having problems coming into India and taking on Maruti. They would have not been able to position themselves. So, what did they do? They came in with a, um, a car that was actually a taxi. They came in with Qualys. Then they moved on to Innova. And huge success over a decade. Then they launched a family car, Etios. And then the small car, Neva. So the whole strategy of entry into a market had to change because of the characteristics of how how um, brands position themselves when they enter new regions. They actually check what is the connect, the emotional connect that people are have established with a certain and and that is when they enter. You know, that is the other thing. Wonderful insight. Because of this, these values, Toyota had a huge problem globally to launch a luxury car. Globally, they had this problem. So do you know that the Lexus brand is owned by Toyota? But it's not called a Toyota. It's called Lexus, and that's a huge, massively expensive luxury brand. And the reason they did that. They had to create a new brand to position that as a luxury brand because Toyota came to know to be known as affordability and dependability and not luxury at all. Nobody was buying Toyota. Let's look at Maruti. Does anybody associate Maruti with a SUV? You know, we don't even know that Kaisashi or you know all the Baleno. They they're not seen anywhere because that's not how you perceive Maruti. It's the largest small car manufacturer probably in the whole world. It's exporting small cars, cars all over the world, including Europe. But it, it, I mean, you don't buy luxury cars from Maruti. And Baleno failed actually because it was positioning itself in the big car, luxury car space. It, you know, so that's that's the reason Mar Maruti has a certain brand value. It is not luxury. So nobody took Maruti as luxury ever. Let's look at, so, you know, exactly the same things I'm, I'm sharing here. So, I'm sort of repeating what I've just said, the insights on Toyota and Maruti. Let's look at Tata and Reliance. See that? Do you think some of these, how about these? Um, I don't think many people said, you know, mentioned too much about Tata here. But their, their brand pitch is around trust. Do you think, don't you, um, I, I, for me personally, Tata is about trust. Uh, um, it's about maturity, it's about high ethics, about something, something like solid. It, it's dependable. If they say something, they may screw up, but they will try hard. Um, they're solid. Other, other people can fix their, um, uh, their their cars and things like that. 
they may not be efficient or high quality you know clearly but there there is some dependability about them there is a trust about them at the same time reliance i heard somebody um, say that uh, reliance is not trustworthy somebody uh, mentioned that right um, do you want to speak up anybody go ahead uh, if if you want to have you have some observations here um, gora would you want to uh, allow somebody to speak up Okay. I guess nobody yeah, has a lot of noise in the background, so I don't know. Okay, uh, if I'm here, I'm, I'm. So, yeah. So, you know, okay. When when you talk of Tata, Tata actually, you know, uh, gives a very large. Uh, you you see Tata as a large people, you know, a corporate people with. Uh, bringing family bringing others onto the you know respectable positions or the leader leadership positions that is one of the you know big ethics or you know i can relate to the high ethics uh, i was not able to you know, put that in words when i was trying to yeah but that is one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, value systems that tata brings in you know bringing others not the family but the others on the on the in on leadership position yeah um, you know uh, again when tata comes in a generic uh, mass you know comes in in the mind you know tata salt is one of the biggest brand well, branding uh, uh, images uh, that brought to tata you know for a lot of time you know tata salt was the salt for a lot of people i think still it still is you know so uh, when i stop think of salt you know tata salt comes to my mind and that's a, that's a really brand image that it's you know in uh, it's, it's in the people mind right now in india if you go to the villages you'll see tata salt as the default salt for people okay so uh, i don't know how to comprehend that but mass reach or you know the, the a, a general public uh, value you know is is actually related with tata you know uh, when i talk of reliance reliance is gives me an idea of innovators they brought change big change in the mobile industry mobile my first mobile was a uh, reliance mobile and you know i see mobile revolution coming out of reliance somehow when you talk of reliance you think of reliance mobile you know by default and changing the game changing the scenario you know the way reliance fit in a lot of spaces they tried they failed they again tried they again failed they succeeded at some place so innovation change agents is one of the you know biggest value that comes in my mind when you think of reliance right yeah um, pretty much done rahul on to you okay has anybody else has any observations around reliance or tata yeah so ritesh says even heavy vehicles um and trucks are associated with tata so ritesh what does that say to you about tata so when i said that uh, uh, the heavy vehicle trucks they are all associated with tata right so it's been almost um, uh, like the main economy right wherein the different goods are carried from uh, one place to another so all of them are uh, sort of associated with the uh, tata trucks and all those stuff right so it's a kind of a when we say the dependability yes because uh, no one will take a chance to switch to another company truck right because they have been there for quite a long time right and people sort of depend on them yeah things to people okay i'm sorry i think i was uh, muted so tata actually takes things to people it establishes connections with people i hear you say the solid you know tracks are there and they, they will be dependable and things like that 
yeah so you know uh, what the point i'm trying to make here is that we all have been able to participate and come up with at least some points around what um, around putting adjectives to brands these may not be the accurate brands you know um, i may relate to i have not done too much work on tata and reliance as much as i have done on uh, uh, toyota and maruti you know the thinking um, around it so but we we agree that there are some commonalities that we are coming to especially in the maruti and toyota example so you know how do we the question really is how do we come to think about brands with such opinions is it from their advertisement alone you know how how does this image get projected to us what do we read and judge about them how do how do their actions have us form these adjectives about them how do their employees feel what is their employees conviction in that product or the company while selling so have you seen airtel's employee employees selling or with their service uh, department versus reliance or tata actually and have you seen a uh, maruti service center deal with its customers versus uh, i don't know if anybody has a ford or or some other car do you see a difference there you know how does their properly um so coming back, back to how do we judge a brand um uh, i probably don't i think you all didn't hear this part so i was based basically saying that how do how do we people we seen some commonalities between toyota and agreements on our agreements around or what we read about them in newspapers how do we sense that their leaders worship that as Okay is this any better can you guys hear me Okay fine so i guess this screen is sort of done i sort of repeated myself three or four times uh so essentially how do we judge the character of the organization you know that that's really my question so think about it and it is meant uh, your interactions uh with with employees of that company uh with their service department that that you know how do we form this such character judgments what do our parents say about it you know things like that so think about that actually uh the external belief in a brand is also by the internal action of the company it's actually how ratan tata what he wears how he talks on tv 
is also the brand that gets reflected in the uh, in the company itself you see a lot of flamboyance in reliance very often and that is probably the reason of innovation as well of challenging um, status quo of, of of breaking rules and on the other hand you have a certain judgment about character of ratan tata himself and you know so these are actions and this reflects in the leadership of the company as well or the other way around the leadership of the company reflects in the brand image of the of the whole organization as well um you all may know it's not infosys which is the largest company uh, right is software services company in india at tcs for years they have been that much bigger than infosys but they never you know never verbose about it never talk so much and things like that that's you know those are those are characters you know which which the leadership has and what what tends to happen is the the brand of the company starts to attract very similar kind of people as well of with similar values that is that means that the brand is actually telling both an internal and an external story in a consistent way i am using the word story here this is important to understand story is not is not a lie okay it's not not like when we say he is telling stories is it is telling lies that's not what i mean by a story a story is it is like when you tell stories to uh, uh, your child you know they connect with it they think it's real they find an emotional connect they they believe in it yeah there is an innate sense of belief in that story all our kids you know who have young kids love chota bheem over here why because they they love his adventures they love that character they relate to it they they know it's a it's a story it's a cartoon it's not real life but they they believe it and this is exactly what happens to brands as well when you start doing that that means that there is a consistent message a consistent story both internal and external that the brand is beginning to uh, talk about when i say internal that means that what is what is the brand story that the brand is communicating internally what are the actions that the leadership or the management of the company is taking when there is a crisis situation um, and in a similar crisis situation what are they doing outside toyota has been one of the first companies to recall thousands of cars because they found flaws in the steering or in the braking system and things like that they back quality to the t their actions back that it's actually with the toyota model that a whole lot of other companies have started doing the same thing when they've come up with problems they didn't recall tata for example had a horrible problem with its axle system with the indigo when they first launched i had a tata indica that was my first car i had a horrible two years with it they didn't replace it i had to fight for it and do all that it was a dependable reliable car it did everything you know like really solid and whatever else but i mean you know there is no quality <laughs> there was no quality tata may be trying to change that whole perception now do you know that tata is consolidating or has been consolidating un under ratan tata all the tata brands all the tata companies but one company that they have not been able to consolidate under them under their brand image is taj hotels that symbolizes luxury so you will see tata t tata techlet you know tata locomotive uh, tcs has a tata brand everything has a tata brand but not taj palace hotels the taj taj uh, hotels chain tata namak everything has the tata brand but not the hotels chain because they don't they believe that they cannot consolidate that in their general brand image of solid reliability but low on quality why because that's a luxury brand and tata is not seen as a luxury brand and if they try and bring it under the under tata the fear is that the whole taj hotels brand image would actually take a dip you get the point so 
you know very good questions to engage with is what are the branding challenges for your organization yeah actually think about this write a little bit when we go back from this conversation and you know do that for yourself as well it's very good to engage with what are what are my own branding challenges why am i behaving is my behavior is my story consistent with with my people with my friends my workplace and so on and so forth and similarly in 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 sweden uh, what are the branding challenges that we all you all feel for the organization and the second question to engage with is how would you like to be perceived so there is a certain reality that where you are right now and where would you like to go how would you like to be perceived these are terribly important questions to engage with all companies they engage with this year on year and multiple times a year every quarter kind of a thing the sit down strategy meetings are all around how do we want to be perceived and are we doing our actions internal is our storytelling consistent internally and externally with who we want to be how we want to be perceived is our is our products our services is our um um you know in our internal hr at hr uh, management is our external um engagements with us our, our customers our prospective employees our prospective customers the society as large, is it all consistent yeah so some takeaways for you you know like like i was saying these are these are things that apply as much to our own lives as well as to our company you know there's a beautiful book by robin sharma called who will cry when you die it's a beautiful small book on reflections about uh, you know the purpose of 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 existence or of uh, a person and how this person how, how a person wants to live so you know like like the sentence says even how we live our lives is is a branding exercise actually not only organization you got to extrapolate to the organization so please do engage with these two questions and you know it will be useful for us to um, you know get some inputs and actually uh, really have a hard look at uh, you know uh, uh, the responses that all of you guys come up with especially when we are off site at dhamshala so marketing starts by telling your own story it starts by writing your own story and it it's improved by distilling it very often to get down to one to two small lines which everyone in the company can relate to and talk about and state it with simplicity and that same message we go out and talk about it there may be maybe the same or a different message internally but it's a story and the next thing that companies need to do after writing their story is to find someone in the company who is going to tell the story who tells the story the best you need to find that person and you need to allocate money and time to enable this person to write and share the story and ensure that the time and allocation is spent is being spent if it is not the company is not going anywhere like i said the brand management is the most important goal for a company and if you're not telling stories if you're not allocating time and money uh, for sharing these stories and telling these stories and finding and you know enrolling people then the brand is not going anywhere and the key distinction here is that marketing is different from sales marketing is about storytelling you know we have this very interesting thing uh, Uh, we have a client um, uh, called Jiva. Um, they wanted to engage any, you know, software company, Google, ideally, uh, on a project. Uh, something very interesting. This client told uh, Gaurav and I. He says that, you know, I have chose three companies who do Google and probably, you know, uh, you, you do Google. Searches in the Delhi and Sia region, and those are the three, two, three companies that come up with. But he says that when I dug deep into each person's site, and when I read what you guys were writing on your website, you know, your site says nothing on the homepage. But as I went inside, you were saying a lot. 
okay now that is a so he said that when i read all that i said this is the company i want to work with that was very uh, you know almost uh, um, i'm i'm finding it tough to find the word but it was very encouraging very very encouraging for me uh, obviously what, what was not encouraging is that the home page na side home page says nothing but at least inside i think we're telling stories we're telling stories because we are writing i think a lot of us are writing yes it's, um, i mean my my aspiration is that a whole lot more people write and obviously it is good to remain dissatisfied uh, and you know be not content actually but i think we are doing something right you know which which people which brand which uh, clients are, are catching on and we really have to find out what is this is this message that people are catching on about us we have to reach that and this is not only we are not going to find that only with clients we have to find that internally all of you this is very very important for us to do so the goal of this presentation is actually to you know coach you or and share with you on the importance of branding and you know why we need to get down to writing these one or two lines how why every one of you has to engage in a story in saying what is that you connect with it what do you think our clients feel about each one of us and then the next question that is each one of us actually living that are we walking the talk or is there a disconnect between our stories are we being authentic or unauthentic inauthentic so really i want to leave you with uh, uh, this question on so what is vision story uh, please do uh, you know either email it across or note it down on a paper and share it with uh, uh, either gorov and or me and you know we would really really love to hear from all of you on um, what is the story what is the adjective that vision is standing for if it were a person what would it look like what would it be where uh, what does it stand for what values um, and if there is a disconnect in those values if there are aspirational things of how you would like this person to be perceived as then what, what are those so those two questions uh, you know uh, that we shared earlier so that's it you know that's my presentation <laughs> for today sorry for the trouble but all these are learnings and insights i've um, you know recently gathered from my last session led by uh, mohit satyanand he is actually a, a veteran from uh, hindustan divas he launched the cracks brand and is a faculty at cim where i'm doing a business management program and a lot of you are exposed to as well so it was a really thrilling session for me and you know i just could be sleep that night so i had to write down and so i made that presentation that night and next morning and i thought I'd, it was so inspiring for me that i thought i'd share this with you all and i hope it's been good do you want to have you know say some things and talk a little bit maybe some questions now gorav over to you oh, thanks rahul thanks for a lovely presentation um guys uh, if anyone wants to put up a question please raise that on chat uh, i would unmute others and mute unmute that person and mute other people to so that you can ask your question uh, uh, okay someone is thinking shashank so shashank please go ahead or if no one has any um, points to share please feel free to drop an email or uh, you know write to rahul, us rahul uh, yeah rahul shashank is putting up a question okay okay yeah rahul so i mentioned it in the uh, chat also i don't know uh, whether you saw it this or not so i, I was basically asking you this question about uh, so earlier we have uh, we had some discussions on other levels uh one kind of the times you have mentioned the uh, uh, that uh, 
uh, we had ideas about how we speak about the Eastern Gods. So, uh, how and why the stance has changed? Uh, Shashank, you are not very clear. So, if you can repeat that, um, you know, oh, sure. probably... Sure. Uh, am, I, am I audible now? Yeah, you are. Okay. So, I, I was asking, uh, uh, so earlier we had discussions, I mean, uh, on other levels uh, about the uh, about branding and about surgeon. Uh, so earlier we have had discussions where uh, Rahul had mentioned that uh, uh, that our work should be speaking for us. Let our work do all the talking because wherever and whenever we are uh, basically doing community work and our work is being uh, work is is on display, uh, we'll get the publicity or we'll get the kind of branding that we want. Uh, so I just want to understand the uh, reasons for uh, the change of stance and saying, okay, we should have a story in front of everyone else where we can uh, portray ourselves. So how and why the change in stance? Okay, uh, on to you, Rahul, for the answer. Sure, thanks. So. Uh, um, Shashank, our work speaks for us, it is really not a, a, a brand message. So if everyone is okay, do you want to actually let them in that uh, you know, just start punching in, you know, things that you feel, uh, are not there. so both of them, that you are not flamboyant. So are there things like that that you see? Um, um, you know, which you, which you feel or find a connect with, or you feel a customer So, simply that our work speaks for us. It's not a brand message. It's not a you know. It's not an adjective. We need to find adjectives that define us, that characterize us. Um, and honestly, I've not been exposed to branding or you know even marketing uh, any time earlier. So it's really a um, you know a, a way to have step back and again look at you know what our brand message is yeah the reason is that we actually are not communicating any brand message if you like not on our website not on our any email communication but people are hearing something when they read a lot more about us when they read our blogs when they read our case studies our resource posts they're hearing something we need to get to that message that people are hearing internally, externally, wherever, and crystallize that. If it's if it's not the message that we want to be perceived as, then we got to change it and state what do we want to be perceived as, and uh, you know, then we got to build our whole own our whole messaging, our story. We got to go out and talk to people with that message. Right now, we are saying that, okay, we do Drupal support and we do product development. But that's about what we do. What do we stand for is, 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 is missing in this whole thing. So does that sort of make sense of you know, what I'm saying? I'm, like I'm saying that there are no adjectives that we have put to ourselves. Does that make sense for you, uh, Shushan? Uh, so uh, Rahul, uh... Uh, I, that that uh, makes sense. Can you be a little louder, please, Shishan? Yeah, uh, uh, that makes sense uh, partially. Uh, just want to understand. So, uh, when you say that uh, we should have a story, we should have, uh, we should have basically have uh, adjectives. So, I just want to understand here. Uh, uh, you say people are perceiving something, speaking some things, and that that is why they are coming to us. Basically, that is where the whole crux lies and people are actually coming to work with us because of certain per, certain uh, perception or certain keywords that they can find by themselves, right? So, uh, want to understand whether we are doing good in those terms and if we are doing good, why would we want to change it? Okay, I'm not, not saying change it, but I'm saying at least identify it. We don't even know why our customers are working with us, you know. We are finding it really tough to articulate who we are about. What do we stand for? What values do we stand for? Or what is our brand message? What, you know, are we, um, how, how are we perceived internally and externally? You know, these are, these are things we've got to identify. Uh, I'm actually going to be writing to 
ಅಷ್ಟು ಹೊಲ suggestion thank you for it uh, we really got to see whether that something we have as a unique value proposition that we are really good at customer relationships or in kere kere answer in, in here our, yeah shashank please go on yeah, uh, uh, girish uh, i don't think uniqueness is the most important thing probably adding value is more important if we can add value to whatever we can whatever we do for whatever other people are doing that will uh, in uh, in itself be unique we don't have to be really stand we don't have to really stand out to say okay we are doing this but if we can do things very well very good uh, in a very effective manner and can add value to people's work people's solutions or whatever solutions we are providing i think that should be uh, that should be enough we don't really need to be standing out or unique so you know so we've been engaging in uh... who are your firm's target audience and what is the value you are creating for them if you just engage with these two questions you know um, as with the earlier brand questions there's a whole lot of answers that will come up or even more questions even more things one may want to go and find out yeah so girish i do not really want to answer product and services more unique uniqueness is is there is nothing unique about it um yeah so uniqueness is in what what you you what you do you, um so there there are companies who say that our customer service is iconic you know many companies say that that is their differentiator that is their uniqueness this saying unique is not good enough yeah so um, i mean anything else um Yeah, so we have a Ritesh with a question. Yeah, 
so uh, when we say about the brand value so does the brand value relates to a company or the individuals working with the company okay i'll go back to um, um this particular slide so you see people get attracted uh to companies when they see an alignment of their values with the brand's values where there are no alignments then people move on companies face a high attrition when they do not see an alignment of their values with the company's values the values could be anything it doesn't have to be very nice uh, philosophical things okay it could be money it could be wall street has a brand value it has a very hard brand value cigarette smokers some cigarette companies create a very solid brand value around cigarette smoking um, i mean we can judge whether it's good or bad bad but that's a brand value they create and they have uh, you know iconic following uh, whiskey drinkers you know they want a certain brand of a whiskey because they associate their themselves with that gucci bags you know they are very popular with secretaries around the world because there is a sense you know we were discussing gucci bags they are like hugely crazily madly expensive but the uh, secretaries a lot of secretaries buy them why do they buy them it's it's you know we were discussing and one of the things came out uh, don't get me wrong but they were like that look we've not the point is you're trying to show that you've arrived in life yeah so and maybe there is an innate sense of not having arrived in life so by buying buying a gucci bag you're trying to position yourself as i have arrived in life and you want to change have a new gucci bag and spend a few tens of thousands on it in positioning yourself that i have arrived in life these are emotional connects people establish with brands and in a similar way people get attracted to companies which have similar brand values and if there are no brand values that either the company has or the people have they, they just come and go and things like that yeah and so it's good to inspect what are the brand values uh, in frigen for example or you know just like we examined look at you know let me give you an example of apple i have heard stories i've not been to an apple store to buy an iphone but i have heard heard that these apple uh, the sales people know every damn thing about the product they know the product really well and they have this thing about you know they they they're smart they 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 believe in in customer service they they'll, they'll be dressed in a certain manner let's look at some luxury brands you know watch brands when you go in some of these brands will have um, sales people who will be very hard nosed they'll be you know you will find a little arrogance in them they will look down upon you sometimes and there there are other brands um, you know on on the other hand where their service is is really solid have you walked into a hotel and experience you know i've traveled in europe us and india and i i clearly know note the difference between how a a person who helps you with the luggage um, you know as you move from the front desk to your room in india and say in europe it's just the world of difference the person is probably similar in the hierarchy of the hotel but the way this person treats a customer in europe versus somebody in india is just too different and that comes from what the hotel business in india stands for versus the hoteling business in europe Stands for in this culture. Uh, am I making sense here, Ritesh? Yeah. Uh, so what what I can uh, gather is if if a company is focused on the quality and whatever the things they are doing, so that will clearly communicate uh, the brand value and which in turn will set an expectation to the client, right? yeah it's also from how the company behaves you know like i said that toyota when they have when they had a quality problem they behaved they behaved in a certain manner they recalled all their cars 
several hundred thousand cards, you know, they recalled because they wanted to establish. They didn't want their quality thing to be compromised at all. So, and these are times when the action of brands, you know, are they walking the talk or are they just saying quality? If they're just saying quality and hadn't reacted like that, that then you wouldn't believe them. For example, Apple and Nike had, uh, you know, there were there were uh, stories in the newspaper about them using sweatshops in China. Now they stand for a certain brand value. They had to do a lot of damage control and react immediately on a very large scale globally to dissociate themselves from sweatshops message. Yeah, because the moment. They saw themselves getting a so Walmart has probably no problem getting associated with it. But Apple had a huge problem. Nike had a huge problem. So they communicate a certain brand value. They want to communicate a certain action. They want to walk the talk about what they say. You know, behind the scenes, they may not have done that. But then if if the brand value is compromised, go back and do something about it. Just like we Yoga did, they recalled cards and said, we're going to fix it at our own cost. So that's a brand value they stand for. So it's similar, you know. So what, and, and their management, their people, everybody would behave like that. Uh, their employees would behave like that. See, there are companies where employees are really concerned about, you know, how, how you feel. If, you know, in, in the US, all retail stores, you can go and return goods. In India, you can't return goods. They wouldn't give you your money back. That is also a brand value of how, how companies want to be perceived or an entire industry wants to behave. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Great point. Uh, I think we'll take one more question from Radhika, you know, before we Arab, end the session. Absolutely inaudible. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for the uh, nice input, uh, Rahul. Uh, before, uh, I think we'll take one more question from Radhika. Um, you know, before we end this session, a very important question, uh, a very, uh, and, uh, which everyone would like to hear is what steps uh, should we take to add great brand value to our fridge? So what, how should we move ahead to, you know, add a story, to create a story, to create brand values, you know, great brand values for fridge? Very important question. Okay, I think the two questions that we really have to engage with are these two and you know, what are the branding challenges for our organization? What are the disconnects you feel in what we try to be and our actions are inconsistent with that? Or in general, you know, what are we not doing and how do we want to be perceived? These are two questions we all need to engage with and write down a few things. Like I said, please send out emails or you know, a handwritten note or something to Gaurav or me. And this is very valuable feedback for um, us, you know, and I'm actually going to be sending mails out to all our clients to see why they work with us. It's a very, very threatening question, but I do want to find out why do they work work with us, and that is um, Gaurav. Back to you. Okay, uh, I think it has been a great session today. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rahul. Thanks. Thanks for that input. Uh, I think we had a great session today. You know, the most engaging one. Um, you know, uh, being a technology company, you uh, tend to think that in the technology sessions you'll have a a lot of questions coming up, but that didn't happen. You know, on a branding session, we had a lot of questions today, and I'm very happy uh, happy on that. Um, we look forward for your questions, on your comments, views, your thoughts on how to create a story, um, uh, what brand values you relate to. Please mail me that. You have my email ID, gaurav at frigen.in. Please email me whatever thoughts you can uh, pour in. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, what it says. Whatever you can think related to the branding or, or related to any value that Sujan can relate to, related to any thing that comes in your mind when you try to work in, when you're working in Sujan, when you came to work to Sujan, 
what you think of when we talk of Sujan Technologies, when we take a name, Sujan Technologies, what comes in your mind is a very important point from everyone. Yeah, so if you can give us the feedback, the you know, that would be great, that would help us to create, you know, more uh, fine-tuned um, branding message for us with the help of other consultants definitely who are, you know, helping us to define, redefine our message. And you know, again, we'll come back to you to you know with the with the with the with the messages that we are creating, and definitely it will be a very collaborative exercise going ahead. Yeah. So just ending the session today, uh, it was a great session, Rahul. Again, thanks for that. Uh, please, again, uh, you know, as I said last week, please raise your hands, volunteer for the webinars. We need many more volunteers. Uh, for next week, we don't have a volunteer as of now. Um, if we can, if you can, one of the you guys can go ahead and uh, step in and uh, you know present something, anything on technology, branding, marketing, anything related to our of our uh, you know region as an as a whole, it would be great. On 31st October, uh, Ashish is uh, presenting on a role of uh, role modules. Uh, as in, uh, you know, from the um, for, uh, on in this webinar series, so we need for the next week a volunteer. Yeah, so I'll just end now. Uh, um, thanks everyone for joining in. It was a longer session and a great one. Thanks everyone.